Hello and welcome to India Today. This is Hesha Chima and joining me for a conversation on this episode of Show Reel is Bodhai and Roy Chaudhary, aka Bodhi. Hello. Hi, hi Hesha. Lovely to have you. Likewise, I'm glad that we're doing this in your house. It's very comfortable. I have a beautiful house right now. Thank you so much. I mean, people can see this side, but I know I can. What I can see that side, which is like a whole bunch of books out there. Yeah. Are you an avid reader, or is this just for show? Uh, no, you you don't spend that much of uh, space and time and money on, on on something for show. No, I love reading. It's always been a you know a passion since my childhood. So yeah, they're all real, and I've read most of them. Lovely. No, you know, I'll tell you why I'm asking because I'm a collector. Yeah. I might not read, but I'll collect a lot of books. I'm just like, wait, is he also following the same thing? But you know what brings me here today is, as I said, the name of the show is also called Show Real. The whole idea is that over my years of you know interviewing and interacting with people and filmmakers, I've understood that there's so much that goes behind the scenes, and I feel like the destiny of a film sort of gets defined when it's releasing, but then the pre of it. And all of that goes behind this is just crazy, and I feel it's very imperative to know what happens, to exactly understand what the psyche of the writer and the director was, and why it is what it is. So I'm going to start off by actually talking to you about Sector Thirty Six. Of course, it was in the news for a lot of reasons, but what I do want to ask you is that what kind of headspace were you in when you actually started writing that? So that's 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 pretty interesting because there wasn't any major headspace apart from the fact I wasn't even in the industry. I was kind of. uh being forced by a friend of mine to kind of write a script and i happen to think about you know it's time to make how is a film made you know and i'm from the corporate sector i never really planned on being in this industry it's uh, as john lennon said you know life is what happens to you while you plan other things yeah. right so i was i said you know let's let's write a film dekhte hain film kya hota hai film kaise likhte hain mm. i didn't know what a broad story was kya concept hoti hai nothing of the sort so i just started hammering it out on final draft and uh start to incorporate these bizarrely different elements one was of this money game show one was of uh, newton's third law of motion uh, you know and the characters just came alive in my head as i was creating them uh, i did not plan the story i think the story revealed itself to me mm. right including the killer and all of that but yeah to answer uh, specifically the headspace you know it started off as a commentary on society and then you kind of begin to realize that the darker and deeper you go the more disturbing it gets oh. you know and the truth really is uh pretty right right and i always love you know uh, to make movies like that because i per- personally believe there are two kinds of cinema in the world one which takes you away from the truth yeah and one which brings you towards the truth yeah i like making the latter mm-hmm. so this became a venture in that and it was pretty scary you know for the time i was writing it because uh, it was very um, you had to become both pande and prem while creating that movie so in a way you pretty much are seeing uh, those unfortunate souls that it was done to with your own eyes because you are justifying it yeah. from prem's point of view at the same point of time you are justifying the opposite end from pandey's point of view so yeah it was quite a stressful time i had to kind of mm-hmm. you know detox for about 30 35 days after finishing it yeah for sure because when you're like dabbling into so many conflicting emotions all by yourself it can get messy right yeah. in the head as well but then tell me something why such a bold move like i understand the part where you're saying that you know well i want to put out truth out there but then don't you think like from a professional business point of view you felt like this is a big challenge so are you like that big a risk, risk taker in life fair to say no but that's that's a very interesting word you know from a business point of view i am not here to make a living to be very honest with you mm. i'm here to try and make good cinema yeah to tell good good storytellers uh, into to tell good stories it doesn't matter if i am a writer or a director i think at the end of it all of us in this industry are just storytellers yeah right and i believe it's important to be honest to the field of work you're in if you are a still storyteller good tell really good stories and the best stories come from within you mm-hmm. if this is the story that comes from within me it needs to be told right so it was risky but then what isn't you know mm-hmm. in today's day and age even if you're working in the corporate sector any day could be your last yeah for sure in our field any film could be your last yeah right but that's true for any f- field of work i think if you um put in your 100% and you believe in what you do you'll end up creating something great irrespective of the medium you know i also want you to break this down on camera for everybody watching in terms of how did the whole process of you know sector 36 sort of came in together and then the whole release happened break it down for the ones who don't know cuz i know right now <laughs> what really happened yeah so what happened was that uh, i was not in the industry i wrote this i uh, 
happened to meet my present agent who's at Collective and he kind of loved the story and then I was very fortunate that Maddock loved it as well. So, uh, at the time I was so new that I hadn't even heard of Maddock. I was one of those, you know, those illiterate masters out there who didn't know what Maddock was. Mm. I have always watched world cinema but no one really looks at, you know, what happens behind the scenes. One possibly knows the actors in life. You know. yeah. For the lay person, you normally know the actors. Yeah. At best, maybe a director. Yeah. But then Maddock loved it. I met with the team at Maddock. And I think, you know, I couldn't have had a better kindergarten for myself as a, a writer in this industry than my first experience with Maddock. Because the entire team was completely supportive, understanding. They wanted to bring this movie to life, mm. right? Of course, there are changes that always are, you know, we yeah. kind of discuss and the entire movie comes into being. But uh, what really stood out was the fact that they appreciated the story that went, the authenticity, the honesty. Even Dino and the entire team, what they loved about Sector was the authenticity that was put into it. And there was no compromise on that, even from Maddox's side. And which is why I think today, you know, a writer can write anything. Uh, a director can then direct it. But if the production house believes in it, it becomes so much more beautiful. Yeah. Right? And I was lucky that way. I think both Aditya and I were lucky in that way that we got the backing of a Maddox, yeah. which is why we have the kind of, you know, the kind of reviews and the kind of uh, love that we have gotten from the people who watched this film because it's very true and authentic. So I think that's what really went behind the making of it. Fab. But you know, tell me something. I, I often get confused about this. So... And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Do you feel like the writer-director equation is thoroughly the most important, especially when you're just going on flow? I'll tell you why. Probably what happens is sometimes when I'm anchoring and then if a script is already given to me, I'll probably have my own interpretation of it, right? And I'm doing it my way. But then the writer's correcting and telling me, listen, but that's the punctuation that you missed or things like that, you know? So how do you sort of match that, you know, disparity or let's say creative conflict, if at all, if they ever happen? See, I started off as a writer. Now I direct as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it is partly true um, to the extent that it does help to be able to write and then to direct because then there is a singularity of vision from the word, from script to screen, there's a singularity of vision, yeah. right? So that really helps. However, having said that, I think there is a, you know, a, a contrary point of view, a counter point of view to this as well, which is many times uh, directors who kind of start working on someone else's script have something which maybe a writer-director doesn't have, which is they bring the, a third perspective to the script completely. Yeah, fair. Sometimes as writers, though we can see everything very beautifully, we also get close-minded to what are the other options of visualizing something. Yeah. And we will never be able to do that. Yeah. So that is where possibly, you know, it's like uh, if, you know, as I always love to say that, uh, you know, a child is brought up ideally by both parents. So now if, you know, if the, the director is the father of the child, because after all, in the end, the writer is the mother of the child in many ways, right? So I think it's very important that the child is brought up with both perspectives. So if the writing is separate and the direction is separate, that perspective might come in. I am just fortunate enough that I can do both, I guess. So yeah. that's about it. But where's this kira of direction coming from? Uh, this kira has come just the way the, you know, the kira of writing came from absolutely nowhere. I guess I was born with the kira. Right. And those who know me know that I have this Kira alive and kicking, which was when I finished uh, Sector, then I kind of decided that I think I would like to, again, see a movie through to its completion. Right. So again, I, you know, spoke to my team and they felt that let's see. And I was very, very lucky because um, I think one of the people who first loved the script way before it got picked up was Vikrant himself. And I knew him from back in the day, uh, thanks to Sector. So what happened is when my agent told me that oh, you want to direct, there are some dates available for Vikrant in 23. And Vikrant is uh, kind of, would be happy to, to interact with you on your script. And you know, to be very honest with you, Hesha, uh, it is very difficult for outsiders to get a footing in this industry. Yeah, for sure. Extremely difficult, right? Yeah. And I can only say that I've been extremely fortunate and extremely lucky because you could be the most talented person in the world. If luck is not on your side, nothing will happen in this yeah. industry. I firmly believe in that. There are people far more talented than me in this industry as well. And I really hope that Lady Luck smiles on all of us yeah. equally. But it smiled on me. I sent my uh, script, which was my directorial venture, to debut to Vikrant. He loved it. Uh, and then it kind of moved forward. So it wasn't really that I am a writer and now I want to be a director. It's just the, you know, I wanted to tell a story from start to finish. Mm. 
which would entail me directing i even got involved with with uh, every single process after the, you know shooting the movie to learn film making in all its glory and to have my own little contribution of that vision throughout but i think it was uh, you know it 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 it's just your personal preference i just think that i am more of a visualizer mm. than just a writer or just a director so that's about it okay in that case tell me one thing that you learned and one thing that you unlearned in this process Orson Welles you know in the early 70s in an interview I was asked that how was he able to pull off citizen kane while he had never been on a set before including inventing stuff as he went along and he said that he had one word for it called ignorance mm. he didn't know that something could not be done i think i pretty much fit that category because i had no clue what to do i had a rough idea i had written the story then i went on a set the first set i went on was me as a director mm. everyone there was my senior right yeah so you have to lead and learn at the same time right. which is not a very easy place to be yeah, in right sure. everyone looks at you for the final approval you are pretty much the boss on the set at the same point of time there are geniuses on the set around with you experts in their field yeah. right so what happens is you kind of pick up as you go you learn um but more importantly you kind of see what the combined vision of that movie will end up being right So I guess to a large extent that is what really I picked up along the way what I what I what I unlearned I think something very clearly that I've unlearned is that many times in film making we are categorically told that this is not something you do mm. I look down upon that thought yeah I think we are I mean it's a fact that we are the youngest form of art in the history of mankind I think this is the age where everyone should experiment be allowed to experiment as yeah. much as possible because you don't know the most unconventional things can give the most dramatic results especially for indian cinema we are the world's largest industry yeah right i would like us to compete with the world's best countries out there when it comes to you know c- c- cinematic genius mm. right if korea and spain have their movies now watched across the world i think we have more stories every 100 square kilometers than they have in their entire geography that's true yeah right and i think it is the responsibility of us mm. to kind of make the world aware of this land of stories which honestly is older than history itself yeah right so i think it's very important that we kind of know that we are entering a brand new paradigm of filmmaking in india the same person who will go and watch a big flick entertainer in a theater will sit and watch a very serious movie yeah. a raw real movie like a sector sitting at home yeah if this person watches a sector and he also goes and for example watches a pathan or a jawan he likes them both yeah. this dichotomy has come in the indian indian viewer and it will stay yeah. so let's give them enough food for both sides let's not kind of let the past dictate what the future should be for the indian industry i think that's something i've unlearned but you know i also want to pick up from you what you just said and i want to ask you you mentioned that we are at the end of the day the biggest cinema that people are watching so that also makes us a huge business prospect right therefore all of us including me myself over here right at the end of the day we are all working because this is our job yeah. So then in that space do the like do these things around streaming numbers and views and box office do you take pressure of all of those things or you just feel like no I don't know I don't think that's my set of thing like what's what's your how do you oscillate between these two then between passion and then number So see for me I think for any creator anyone on the creative side of filmmaking the numbers come later right okay. we don't fo- we don't focus on the numbers because we don't even know what the number would be as a writer it comes out from your soul it comes out as a passion project you have no idea if it is at least when it's not commissioned to be written in a particular manner Fair. right mm. so i do only original work so what happens is if it comes from me only then otherwise you'll not be able to write it if you're going to just think about yeah, how it's going to perform yeah otherwise if you're going to if someone tells you that this is a set piece you have to do it you may not even be able to write it you have to feel for it to write it mm. and all you know original uh, writers always have to feel for the subject they are they are writing about So I think the numbers and all is secondary for us but having said that I do understand see at the end of the day all of us like any other industry even film making is an industry yeah it needs money to survive you remove money and movies won't even get made True. right so we need that basic return on investment yeah from a being an mba myself you know in my past life i kind of understand why this imperative is so critical however i think the fine line between making a movie to earn money and making a movie that earns money needs to be respected mm. and very often i think we kind of veer towards the former and not the la- the latter yeah and the moment you start planning on making movies to make money those gambles can can go very badly south mm. which is what i think we see on numerous occasions yeah 
let the movie win, let creativity win, and let it make money. Like Parasite by Bong Joon-hoon, it was a brilliant movie. It smashed box office records. It won the Oscar. It won the Palme. It won it all. So I think everyone won in that yeah. scenario. Yeah. So let's create a great movie that earns. Let's not make a movie to earn. I right. think that's what I believe in. So, what's your temperament like on a set as a director? In that case, oh, I'm a nightmare. Uh, I'm quite, quite the terror. I am a micromanager. I get involved in everything. I'm so, so grateful that you know I've had teammates who have indulged me and supported me. And without them, whether it's you know for my 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 debut film, my DOP, my associate director, my editor. You know, and and that too because I came with absolutely no experience. I did not earn my stripes, as it were. Mm. So I had to be possibly even sharper and possibly more in my A game all this all the time yeah. because I could not. I was always under a magnifying glass, right? So um, on sets, I think I get very involved. For me, my goal um, as a director, because now I'm no longer a writer, but I'm on set. Yeah. Right, I kind of forget that I wrote it. I suddenly start seeing the script as something that was given to me, and I have to now execute it. I very often forget that <laughs> I wrote it, and there itself I start making the changes because luckily the writer is available right there. And for me, the goal is to kind of get the performance out of my actors. Yeah. I think a director, in my humble opinion, has two major jobs. One, he has to elevate the script. To even a higher level than what was written, yeah. and B, he has to get the finest performance out of his actors, yeah. right? If you can do that, I think you have done your job as a director. Yeah. To that extent, I can get very, very mad and very, very involved in everyone's life. But I hope at the end of the day, they don't mind it, love it, and possibly forgive me as well for being that. For sure, I think the outcome eventually is what, as you rightly said, if everybody wins, why not? Yeah. We can all take exactly. it a little bit with a pinch of salt. But you know, Budi, also what I want to ask you is that. Specifically with Vikrant, right? Like you've seen him act out something that you wrote, and then now with Talaq Homeik, you have something which he's you're directing him to be this particular person or a character that you've directed written for him. Directed actually. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. So you've written that, but now you're like directing him for yeah. Talaq, right? That's what I'm saying. So from writing to watching him act out what you wrote, visibly now directing something that's probably not yours, but then again making sure that he still delivers what he probably did at Sector. What was that rapport and relationship like for your film with him, where you directed him? See, I was very lucky with my cast for for Talaq Homeik because I had uh, someone as naturally gifted as Vikrant Masi, yeah. who agreed to kind of uh, work with me on my debut project. But I have to mention that Rashi Khanna, who's a complete revelation, who plays the female protagonist. I mean, she's just a wonderful human being and a brilliant performer. And I really hope the Lakhon will make everyone, you know, sit up and notice the multifaceted talent that Rashi Khanna is. But coming back to, but coming back to Vikrant, see, Vikrant is someone, you know, on sets. He's someone who has to understand the soul of a story. Mm-hmm. Then you don't need to touch me. Mm-hmm. He just becomes that person. So you know, I never really saw him perform in sector because obviously I did not direct yeah, sector. I saw him perform here. Uh, he was always with, with you know he's always been someone we kind of vibe intellectually on so many topics. We laugh and joke together, but he's a thorough professional when he comes on set. I mean, literally, he'll be someone else the moment the camera goes off, and the moment the the camera's on, he is in character the very second the camera goes on. So as as a director, he's. In my opinion, at least for me, he was an absolute pleasure to work with because you know I would tell him the the psychology of the character, the the psychographic makeup of the character. He would understand it, ask all the right questions, and then say, "Okay, ready? Let's go." And he would go, and he himself will many times you know stop the stop the take and say, "Cut, cut, cut! No, I don't like this. Let's go again. Let's go again." Mm-hmm. So he's a bit of a perfectionist that way. Yeah. So it's an absolute treat to having worked worked with him both as a friend and as an artist and. Uh, Whenever the film is, you know, the, released, I, I hope the rest of the country will also be in as much awe of my, of Rashi, of Vikrant, and of you know the other people who've been a part of my uh, directorial debut as I was while making it. Yeah, you know, I interviewed Vikrant and I asked him what does he aspire to do between action and cut because he's phenomenal. Like twelfth fail, I was crying. So he just said that, listen, I'm doing my job after asking some hundred questions, and then I'm looking at the director. Like, ha- has he gotten what I wanted? You know what they also wanted, and then eventually, when we both have that look, yeah, okay, we've gotten it. We know we've gotten it. 
So I was like, wow, that's crazy because I was so intrigued by him with what he's done, even in Sector. In fact, I'm very curious to ask you to break down one of your scenes from Sector, which is with Vikrant and Deepak. How was this money game show ka connection sort of coming in play? Like, what was that thought all about? So when I was, you know, creating Sector, um, I never like to talk about the crime. I don't like painting people who are black or white. I think all of us have a shade of grey. Yeah. And I think our cinema should reflect that. Yeah. So what happened is, this was the year 2006 where I'd imagined my entire thing set up. And at that point of time, you know, um, game shows had become quite the trend, right? So what happened, if I remember, in fact, in 2006 in real life, you know, Bachan Saab had come with KBC back, back in the day. So I think that was, the, that was the time when, you know, all of us were fascinated and it was a mandatory viewing Monday to Friday. We would, every single person... The fascination for a country newly liberalized to kind of see that somebody had the possibility of winning one, of winning one crore. Yeah. It was beyond one's dreams. Yeah. So if something similar mm -hmm. like that would have would happen to my main antagonist, right? Could that be a motive for him to get his family out of poverty mm -hmm. and become a millionaire himself? Because as he says that who can banna chata crore? And I think that kind of answers for millions and millions, if not a billion plus Indians here. We all want to be a have from a have not. And yeah. if we already are have, we want to be even more haves than yeah. before. I think that's the perennial quest of us Indians. Yeah. So when that really came into play, whether it was Newton's third law of motion or for that matter, uh, you know, the game show uh, and then finally the interrogation scene. Yeah. Yeah. So in the interrogation scene, what happens is what happens when Two people sit across each other. We have seen enough and more interrogation scenes. Normally, there's a third degree torture involved somewhere. Yeah. The typical tropes and the cliches will continue. This was different. Yes. So, when a person is so deeply psychotic, he's so deeply psychopathic that for him, it is normal. Mm -hmm. Right? He has to just go back and watch this game show. Yeah. So, you have to ask me, I will tell you, 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 I will uh, the shock, the banality of the crime, the fact that someone can say it so openly without a hint of remorse or guilt, right? It's like, you know, the greatest serial killers, whether it's Bundy or Dharma, they've also never had any guilt when they've yeah. spoken. So I imagined that kind of a scenario happening where he just wants to go home in time to be able to watch his... TV show and the people's lives did not matter because in his head, as he justifies later, hai kaun sir ye log? Mm. And why are you so bothered about them? Mm. Ye jo kaam pe lagate hai, wo bhi to hi kar rahe na inka. Mm. So he feels he is completely justified in the way he is looking at these people. You are just wasting my time because at least I can become a millionaire. Mm. They don't matter in any case. Mm. So I thought if I can just show it in a very simple conversation, the shock on Pandey's face and the SP's face and the complete simplicity with which my criminal just goes ahead and says these words, I think makes us all look a little inside us yeah. and say, you know, do we, are we also not kind of guilty in being a part of the world and helping create, create a world where the have-nots will keep looking up at us mm -hmm. and saying, I wish I could be like him. Mm -hmm. What would that conversation be like? So I modeled that conversation in a very simple have versus have not conversation across a police interrogation table. Fab. Lovely. But listen, tell me something. Does it bother you, Bodhi, when there are times where somebody probably would walk up to you and tell you, like, very harsh movie you made, yeah. Like, what was it? Why did you write that? I see it as a compliment, Hesha. Mm. See, as I told you, there are movies which take you away from the truth and movies that take you towards the truth. You may forget a movie that took you away from the truth, but you will always remember a movie that took you towards the truth because you know in today's day and age when the di 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 you know the digitization of media and the kind of online consumption that we are all part to i think we are getting more and more lost into our phone screens and to this alternate life that we think we need yeah right there are people working in our homes there are people bringing us food there are people who are delivering our medicines and our groceries our palak our dal everything with a big smile on their face do we even look in that direction and that's, there are billions of such stories in India. I think for every, for every four movies that make you imagine dancing in Switzerland or, or uh, you know, Geneva or marriages and romances that never really happen in real life, True. there should be one movie that reminds you of who you are and the responsibility that you have to society and be 
what is it that you are like in society so possibly you might end up becoming a better person after watching that movie hmm. great that's a good way of somebody who's probably not watched it for them to go and watch it and understand what we're talking about um you know what i also want to ask you is very recently i won't divulge into the name of the person but i interviewed somebody and they said that very renowned filmmaker and he said that there is a dearth of good writers being given opportunities for them to showcase content if that happens the number of re-releases of old films that are happening might not happen what's your take on that see i think um india unlike hollywood you know here i think writers to a large extent still languish in the background are there opportunities enough enough opportunities not as much as they could be i guess hmm. i think the first thing we need to really do is to understand that there would be no content without the writing yeah. right we tend to forget that yeah. finally a movie is built on the star who is performing it and all merit in that of course people yeah. go to watch it because of the star but there would be no movie without the first yeah. word being written right there is no movie good or bad someone has written it i think somewhere along the way i think our industry needs to even now a lot of steps have been taken but i think even now this industry needs to kind of wake up to the fact that writers need far far more than what they are currently getting they are still scrounging about they are still wo- working for a pittance right they are still never say die the hope just kind of bursts forth from them irrespective and we kind of tend to forget when it comes to you know the final analysis of the movie that there was one person without whom this movie may not have ever been made so i think a greater amount of importance should be given uh, for instance i have i have been exceptionally lucky and i'm very very grateful to all those people who have uh, helped me in this journey so far but i also understand that there are many other people who need the kind of help and i wouldn't even call it help i think is their right mm. ye unka haq hai mm. i think they are being denied their right in many ways mm. so i think as a concerted movement in the industry i think there should be some minimum standards that writers should be given across all movies where is the name coming for instance right do they get media exposure yeah. and i think that is changing now it is right i was just getting to that yeah, yeah. it is it is uh, changing i mean after for example i watched control and i believe that uh, and i heard that you know vikram actually sat with his writers for a workshop for the audience and that is so fulfilling because i think all we want is 2 minutes in the sun mm-hmm. just to be acknowledged that this person birthed the story yeah that's all we really need because it's a very lonely li- life for a writer we just sit and we do it all alone if you're doing it alone yeah right if it's a writer's room it's just two or three of us tearing each other's hair yeah so i think you know it should be very important otherwise you will have a flight of good writers from this industry mm-hmm. you know we have the potential of creating a thousand salim javeds in our country yeah. right even back then they had to get their names forcefully stamped on posters to begin with in today's day and age it's a shame if people still have to do that and they do so i think we owe it to every single talent and technician in the film industry and because i am a writer first before i am a director yeah. i speak speak personally especially for writers i think it's time that they get their place in the sun as well that's exactly why i asked you also because you started off as a writer and now you're a director i'm sure you're going to be also like i'll always be a both. writer i'll always yeah. be a writer first always yeah, a writer that'll be interesting so picking from this i want to ask you what's that one misconception now that you would like to break for everybody watching you at the moment that probably people have about the entertainment industry and directors for sure see directors i can't really comment because i just know myself mm-hmm. and how i function it will be wrong of me to kind of comment on other directors i think every director has his own unique style personality and uh, way of making films and i think everyone will naturally gra- gravitate to their own style no one has any right to comment on someone else's directorial abilities but about the entertainment industry what i have seen and please understand i'm al- i will always be the outsider in my head mm. right i'll always be that wide eyed person who never imagined he'd be here never prepared for it i've not studied this but i'm here and let's see how long this journey lasts but you know the uh, the common person thinks it's all glitz and glam yeah i think there are long the truth is there are months if not years of just waiting mm. there are bills that always need to be paid yeah. right which are never really <laughs> completely paid for anyone <laughs> right yeah uh, the top tier actors and the top tier directors every actor or director is not in there in that in that category i think we all struggle to a larger or lesser extent and even those who are in the top top tier have their own struggles on a daily basis right 
and uh, the fact that you know it is a job at the end of the day mm. you know it is not that dreamy sequence you have seen on film and you fell in love with there were at least 75 people on that set mm. someone has read a script those emotions have been created to make you feel better happy or sad or excited or scared yeah. right at the end of us at the end of it i think all of us are doing the job to kind of make you sit and watch us so do watch us because it's not so glamorous where we live we hope it was for you and at the end of the day we just ordinary people yeah. who literally do the same things as anybody else just because the camera is on us doesn't make us different in any manner or form and i think that's something which a lot of people in the industry don't realize yeah there's like just any other job you want to point just the lucky part is you're doing something you love doing yeah that's the only difference really Hmm. Okay, last thing before I let you go, since I'm getting to chat with you before anybody can even talk about your film, I just want to know why the title. Ah, talaq. Just ho. that, yeah. Talaq ho me ek. I was like, ye ye kya bol rahe hain? Ye talaq ho is it divorce only or am I I'm just going to ask him? So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be asking you, what is talaq ho me ek? I know it's your first film, directorial debut with Vikrant, Vikra, with Rashi. But the name. Yeah. So this name really. Um... it happened very interestingly so i was in the shahar and this phrase we all use lakhon mein ek mm. right so i said what if it becomes the lakhon mein ek and i laugh myself laugh laugh to myself in the shahar really mm. and then what happened is that one day when uh, i was asked if i possibly have something for for vikrant i was i asked them you know how many days do i have because he was very busy and he was cho- choosing things at the point of time so i had this one shot really i could try and pull off so i was told that you have about 7 days I had no script in my hand, but somehow Talakhon Me Ek as a name, which in a way was very catchy for me, it was a divorce. Yet it's a one in a million situation. Yeah. So I said, "Thik hai, let's write it down." So I literally started on a Monday and I finished on a Friday the entire script. Wow. Because I had a deadline to to meet, and uh, yeah, so I just kind of uh, poured it all out, and the rest, rest, rest is history. You know, you you kind of things that happen. Get a name. Now we're talking about Talakhon because it got made, right? Yeah, If it's I a name never... that stays. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a very like. What is this? Yeah, so so I hope the intrigue will kind of uh, lead to people loving the film as much. But that's how Talakhon me ek became the title. And you know what? I can tell you once it's out, or before this is going to become a phrase that people will catch on to. Like you know, somebody will have a divorce like Tera Talakhon me ek hai. <laughs> is what I'm thinking. But well, thank you so much for your time. I had a great conversation with you. Like I'm that. looking forward to Talakhon me ek for sure. And I feel what I've deciphered is that you you perform the best when in pressure. So give you deadlines, and I think you will come up with stuff. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for chatting More with India today. Thank you. Chatting.